coming up on the November edition of Channel 12's Lakeside News. We'll introduce you to local mystery writer Mary Monica Pulver in this month's Around the Lake. The Excelsior Fire District's Kelly Murphy Ringgate will recap their annual Open House and Safety Fair. We'll preview LMCC's exciting new music show, Land of 10,000 Bands. And Barb Calhoun will cook us up another delicious dish this month. Lakeside News is next. Hi, I'm Chris Feld and welcome to Lakeside News, where you'll find news and events from around the lake area. In this month's Around the Lake, we'll introduce you to a local writer who cooks up entertaining murder mysteries in the town of Excelsior. Tyler Ray reports. It occurred to him to wonder what had tripped him, and he went over to kick at it, using his cell phone to weakly light the area and dislodged enough snow to disclose the blank, cold face of an old woman with hair the color of the snow. Author Mary Monica Pulver spins yarns about the risky field of needlework. Poor Excelsior, I am just doing terrible things to Excelsior. And she finds her inspiration in the small town of Excelsior. I needed an intact small town within driving distance of St. Louis Park, you know, so I could visit it often. And I picked Excelsior because it's charming. It really is, it's, it's a sweet little town. Um, it's got a nice history, an interesting history. Kind of a theme of these books is that somebody who is innocent, who is suspected of a crime, will come to Betsy and then Betsy proves that they didn't do it. The book does write itself, pretty much. I have an idea of the murder. That's usually where I start. I, I, I come up with a body first. And then I figure out who did it and how and why. So that's pretty much set in concrete. Well, mystery stories are moral tales. Uh, they, they have a bad guy and a good guy, and at the end, the bad guy is vanquished, which is good. Well, I try every so often to write something else, but sooner or later, I kill somebody. <laughs> it's just, you know, I get a little bored. We need some excitement. I try to be good-humored about it, even though it's murder, you know. You don't have to get, go into all the gory details. I think that these in, in all are comfort reads because, uh, you take a, because they're amongst ordinary people, people that you can identify with. One of the reasons I like Excelsior is because there's always something interesting going on, and it has these interesting shops, you know, and, and uh, it's, it's fun, like, again, to use real people. Mary Monica has been a published author since 1987 and has developed a formula to keep her cozy novels coming. Getting the idea is fun. It's exciting. You think, oh, that would work. That, what a great idea. You know, you go someplace and you say, oh, boy, you could hide the body here very easily. And then you start it, you know, and you, and you get your grabber going and you think, okay, this is going to work, this, this is going to work. And then, like I say, you get involved with the characters and you watch them as they're reacting to things. I like Betsy. She's fun. Uh, I like the group of friends she has around her. She just picks up a little clue here and there she, and breaks alibis or whatever. And then the bad guy is caught and removed from the group and order is restored. And that's comforting. Uh, there's so much bad news going on in the world today. And people start to feel helpless about it. You know, there, there's nothing we can do about this. And so, so you need a place to go where things are going to be all right. Apart from writing, Mary Monica holds a special place in her heart for one unique piece of fashion. She had antique hats. And I happened to have an outfit. Then they had this, she had this marvelous hat from the 40s, a Myrna Loy hat, absolutely wonderful hat, that went with the outfit. And I bought it, and I wore it, and it was like everybody was complimenting me on it. And I thought, oh. <laughs> Fortunately, Mary Monica will continue to write novels using Excelsior as the setting. However, coming up with the titles is still a mystery. I now have a standing offer of a free novel, suitably autographed, to anyone who can give me a title I can use. And it has to be four or fewer words, it has to have a needlework term in it, and it has to have an element of threat. Coming up after the break, the Excelsior Fire District's Kelly Murphy Ringgate will recap their annual Open House and Safety Fair. But up first, election time is here and we've got all your local races covered. 
The 2012 election season is in full swing, and the Lake Minnetonka Communications Commission has it covered. LMCC will bring it to you every step of the way leading up to the November 6th election. This will be our biggest election year ever. Anyone running for mayor or city council in our 17 member cities has been invited to tape their own five-minute candidate statement. LMCC viewers will have the opportunity to follow every race in the lake area. In addition, LMCC will be covering several mayoral and city council candidate forums. These highly contested local races will be taped in partnership with the League of Women Voters during the month of October. Plus, Capital Update and Taco Report host Randy Gilbert will discuss the issues facing Minnesota voters on election coverage 2012. Meet your candidates. Randy will interview the candidates running for State Senate District 33 and House Seats 33A and 33B. Now you're probably asking yourself, how can I watch LMCC's 2012 election coverage? Well, you have two choices. First, beginning on Monday, October 8th, be sure to tune in to LMCC Channel 21 starting at 5 p.m. for Meet Your Candidates. And remember, every LMCC member city race will be included leading up to the November elections. For further details or to obtain a copy of our Channel 21 election schedule, contact us via email at lmcc at lmcc-tv.org. Don't have cable or want to watch our election coverage online? No problem. Just go to the LMCC website, www.lmcc-tv.org, and click on our Election 2012 logo, located on the LMCC homepage. There you'll be directed to our election programming, where it's all available using our video on demand option. You can choose the type of program you want to watch, when you want to watch it. Candidate statements, candidate forums, from the races in Deep Haven to Woodland, we've got it covered. So get informed, learn about your candidates, and vote on November 6th. This is Democracy in Action. Excelsior Fire Department's Fire Prevention Open House and Safety Fair. It's a chilly night in Excelsior, but we got a great crowd. Let me take you on a little tour, but before I do that, I want to let everybody know the purpose of the open house and why all the fire departments have a unified effort to hold open houses this time of year. We're trying to prevent fires, trying to prevent burns, and we're actually trying to help people with life safety issues. Just like on First Responder TV, everybody's making a team effort to make sure our community's safe. So let's go on a tour. So of course, this year we have the exciting live grease fire demonstration where you can see what happens when you put out a grease fire with water. It's an explosive demonstration. Welcome to the Excelsior Fire District open house. Um, this is our kitchen fire grease trailer demonstration. Um, we're gonna start off with a uh, smoke detector. Um, everybody, uh, your uh, daylight savings is coming up. Change your batteries in these. That's a good way to always remember that. Uh, also test them every month. Next thing we're going to talk about is uh, some kitchen safety. Um, biggest thing I can stress to parents nowadays is to teach your kids to cook. Okay? Um, I know when I was growing up, it was always stay away from the stove, it's a big four foot border, you know, anytime you went in the kitchen. Nowadays, what we're finding is, is actually if you teach the kids how to do it properly and to be comfortable there, the accidents are less. Um, a couple of things about also being with some kitchen fire safety. Everybody should have a fire extinguisher in their kitchen. When we're done with this demonstration, you can go over there and actually learn how to use a fire extinguisher. Um, when you put these in, your, when you put one of these in your kitchen, I know they're ugly. They're not really very attractive. But if you go and stuff it in a closet, in the corner, in a cupboard, it's not going to do you any good when you need it. Okay? They're never a convenience thing. Um, I, we always recommend to people, put it on the door you're going to exit if you do have a fire in your kitchen. That way then at least you can grab it, give it a try. If it doesn't work, get out and dial 911. But at least you gave it a shot. Like I said, if it's in the corner or something and your stove is between you and that, and that's where your fire's at, it's not going to do you any good. So, you know, they're expensive. Put it somewhere where you can use it. Um, the second thing is if you do do a lot of deep frying, nowadays they make deep fryers, they're cheap, relatively. Um, they have a thermostat in them, so the oil will not start on fire, okay? So if you do do a lot of deep frying, best investment is to just go ahead and buy yourself a deep fryer. 
Um, the other thing is also make sure you're always using the right oil in these things. Um, we're getting to that turkey fryer season again, so those of you that have those, remember to read the instructions first. Do not use this oil. This oil is bad in those. <laughs> um, the second thing is, um, it, it, we're running into, on several occasions lately now, all this, everybody's stoves are all electronic. We all got push buttons and you know, there's no more knobs, no more real safety features on them. We're running into pets and kids getting up and touching buttons and starting stuff that shouldn't be. Um, so if your stove has stuff in it, please get stuff out of your stove. Tupperware burns really well, so if you want some place to store it, that's not a good place, okay? Move it somewhere else in the kitchen. Don't leave stuff on top of your burners. Like I said, we're getting pets now where people will leave something on the burner. The pet will come up there and they'll actually start the stove top and start a house fire that way. Um, so just little things to remember, some, some cleanliness things. Um, another thing that's out there on the market is what they're called a stove top fire stop. The um, best place to go right now is on, on the internet. Just go online, look up Stovetop Fire Stop. Otherwise, soon they're going to be in both Menards and Home Depot. But these, there's a magnet on the top. They just stick up into the hood, you know, over the burners. You put a couple up there, and basically it's a fusible link. When it reaches a, you know, if you get a fire and it bleeds, it just puts an extinguishing agent down and puts the fire out. Um, as you can see, Hank here is not our best cook. Um, he has a little fire going on because he wasn't paying any attention. Um, when you have this situation, the best thing to do, um, I know there's a lot of wife's tales and stuff about throw flour, throw baking soda, don't do any of the above. The best thing to do is grab a cookie sheet or a frying pan, something that's bigger than the pan that's on fire, and just gently slide from the side in. Then what you're going to do, that pan must be warped because it's not. Turn the heat off. Fire should go out. Um, next thing you're probably going to want to do is dial Domino's or somebody. You're not going to be eating that anymore. Um, and and, and re literally walk away. Because if you go and try and do something with that, Hank's going to take that pan off now. It's good. It, uh, until that oil cools way back down, it's always going to keep igniting. So. Just, like I say, put the pan on it and walk away. Don't try and move it, because if you walk and grab that pan, the handle's gonna be hot. Next thing you're walking through the kitchen and you spill some of that hot grease, you drop it, and now you got hot grease all over your kitchen. You know, you're making a bigger mess than it's worth. Um, the other thing about unattentive kitchen, or cooking is, I remember uh, back in the day, I'm old enough to remember that our phones used to have cords on them. Mom could never get more than six feet away from the stove when she was cooking. We didn't have house fires back then. Just kidding, but that was probably part of the reason. People nowadays, you can go anywhere in your house with your phone, you know, out in the yard. Um, what we're kind of trying to get people to do, pretty much everybody knows when they're cooking something how long that item needs to cook. Get an egg timer. Set it. Hopefully then if you walk away or you're somewhere in the house when that timer goes off, It'll kind of bring your brain back to what you were just doing and get you refocused and back in the kitchen to do what you're doing. Um, last but not least, we're going to show you the last thing to do. Um, this, what's in there is just Wesson oil. I have one inch of oil in the bottom of the pan. Hank's got just one, that's just one cup of water. And it's water, it's not gasoline or anything like that. He'd drink it except for I don't want him to. Um, at the count of three, Hank's going to put that water on the fire and you're going to see how you'd wind up in the hospital in a big hurry if you did this. Ready, Hank? One, two, three. So you can imagine if you did that at home, what you just did to your kitchen, because you're going to need an ambulance, you're going to need a fire department, you're going to need a lot of stuff. So like I say, just slide a pan over it, shut the heat off, and walk away. Then we're gonna go over to the residential fire sprinkler trailer where people can see how a single residential fire sprinkler puts out a fire in a home. A lot of people don't know about residential fire sprinklers and here at the Fire Prevention Open House, we're trying to educate people about this great and effective tool that will save your family if there's a fire in your home and might actually save your home in the meantime. What I'm gonna do is light the uh, paper at the bottom of the basket. Fire's gonna travel up the curtain going to go across the ceiling. There's a sprinkler head over the window that's going to activate automatically. It's going to spray water on the curtain. It'll come out a little bit here, but you'll be, you'll be dry, okay? okay? 
fire will come out underneath his header and go across the ceiling. As long as you stay seated, you'll be fine. Okay. Oh. And you guys in the back, you, if you want to see how far to, to bend I down. I got spray on. <laughs> listen, listen to me, please. If you want to know how far to bend down, watch me, because my hip pockets are going to be planted on the floor. Okay. After the fire is out and over, then I will tell you that you can get up and leave, or you can stay and inhale. Okay. Anybody want to leave? Oh yeah. Do you really want to leave? I don't know. Now. Okay. Then we're going to proceed. Oh. Here we go. I, I thought he meant. Yep, we're going live now. Now you're locked in. And we have a clock back here that's been about 12 seconds so far. Now we're going to go on a tour of what else is going around at the fire department. So let's check out the fishing pond. This is a great thing. Kids have a great time going to the fishing pond. They earn their bait by going to different booths, different exhibits, answering questions. They earn their bait and then they get to fish for fun stuff. So let's swing around to Mrs. M. She's new this year. Mrs. M is teaching us about animal safety, how to approach dogs safely, and snapping turtle safety. Believe it or not, a lot of people get hurt by snapping turtles every year because they can't tell the difference between a mud turtle, painted turtle, or a snap turtle. So she's helping us teach people how to stay safe with turtles and dogs. So then we go to Knutson Chiropractic. Knutson Chiropractic has been here for years. They're actually called Knutson Health Group now. But they're teaching kids how to keep their back safe, how to protect their back and save themselves from injury or injuries when they get older. Because let's face it, we're loading these kids' backpacks with a lot of homework teachers. We have BART Animal Rescue. BART stands for Basic Animal Rescue Training. These are the people that train police officers and firefighters how to rescue and resuscitate animals if they get caught in a fire or at an accident. And they even teach people how to herd horses that are out of their pen properly. They do a wide variety of things and you can check out their website. We also have Ridgeview Medical Center here. We have an ambulance here and we have the hospital here. And they have a great wheel where kids get to spin and answer questions and win prizes. And of course, we have both our police departments here. We have Deep Haven and South Lake Minnetonka Police Departments here. They serve our community and they do such a great job. And they really are good at teaching our citizens how to stay safe and keep their home and property safe also. Okay? so. Can't forget HCMC Ambulance, they're here too because they also take care of us in this community too. HCMC is showing people our Lucas tool and um, Richview is showing everybody our Auto Pulse. Both of these machines do the same thing. They're automatic CPR compressions machines. They're actually increasing people's survival when they have a cardiac arrest because they do the compressions so the firefighters and the police officers don't. And again, it's increasing people's survivability. So this. What they have in their ambulances are great. I think that's about it. I think we've seen the whole tour. If I forgot somebody, I'm sorry. But again, come next October, come to our fire prevention open house and help us fight fires by preventing them. Thanks everyone, see you next year. Coming up next, we'll preview LMCC's exciting new music show, Land of 10,000 Bands. Lakeside News returns in a moment. Did you know that the leading cause of death for Minnesota teens are traffic crashes and that 75% of teens killed are not buckled? As a parent, there are many things to worry about when you give your teen the keys to your car. But poor choices don't need to be deadly. One of the safest choices they can make is to buckle up. And teens are more likely to buckle up if they see their parents doing it all the time. A message from our partners at AAA and the Minnesota Safety Council. For more information on Live to Drive Another Day, visit MyFox9.com.
Coming up after the break, Barb Calhoun will cook us up another delicious dish. Lakeside News returns in a moment. Here's what's coming up on First Responder TV. We'll experience Operation Black Cat, a large-scale emergency training exercise that brought many local public safety agencies to mound. I'll introduce you to Becky White, the public fire safety educator for the state of Minnesota. Scam Alert will give you an update on scams that have been targeting citizens in the lake area. And we'll recap the Excelsior Fire District's Fire Prevention Open House and Safety Fair on Safety Source. First Responder TV airs daily on LMCC's Channel 12. With me in my kitchen today is Jerry Lucy. Jerry is a new to the Gillespie Center in the last year, but it doesn't take him long to feel right at home. And he's a man of many interests. He is a landscape architect, have I got the right title? Yep. And he obviously loves to cook. He square dances. He comes here for exercise classes. He takes good care of himself. And we're all glad that he's here, and I'm glad to know him. I like counting you as a friend. Thank I'm you for being here today, Jerry. Glad to be here, Barb. He is going to show us how to put together a tomato pie. And I'm just going to step out of his way and let him tell you about it. Well, I start with a savory crust made with uh, one cup of flour, a quarter of a cup of olive oil, quarter of a cup of hot water and a dash of salt and refrigerate it. Well, you need it for about 10 minutes and then refrigerate it for an hour before you roll it out. And the pie itself is very simple. It's made up of layers of tomatoes in the crust. Sliced about an eighth of an inch thick. Jerry has large garden spaces, and, and I bet this is something you do with your garden tomatoes. It's seasoned with olive oil and sweet basil. And if you have fresh sweet basil, that's the best, but dried will work. And it calls for a quarter of a cup of olive oil and a teaspoon of dried basil. Then a layer of cheese. And I like the Parmesan. And here's a little Colby Jack. Another layer of tomatoes. This is looking good, folks. It helps to have these pre-sliced, so you know, when I, when I have raised, it goes together quickly. Yes, when I have raised basil, I'm always hunting. You know, I, it, it, I produce more than I can use. Oh. So you can freeze it, and you can dry it, and you can do those things with it. But this it would be a wonderful. It's delicious on here and fresh. So you add the seasoning then with each layer. Another layer of cheese. And I like to use a couple kinds of cheese. Just increases the interest in the flavor. Final layer of tomatoes. Romas are such a good tomato for those these kind of things because you don't get the amount of juice, yes, right? Yes, they work very well for this. I love the meatiness of them. There. A little more seasoning. And on the top, well, a little bit of Parmesan. and a little mozzarella oh. on the top because that melts and browns nicely. And it oh, has... I think I'm gonna want to be Italian for this. This is just wonderful. And it has to cook about 30 minutes to get all the moisture, but you 
You cook it uh, at 375 for so about fairly hot oven. For about 30 minutes and be careful not to let it burn and it'll turn out nice. Oh, I think it would turn out heavenly. All of that cheese and the tomatoes in there. Oh, summer magic, but it's good any time of the year, right? Yep. <laughs> and because of constraints on time today, folks, we're not gonna get to see this finished, but I think you can figure out that it's going to look beautiful because all of that's gonna be melted down in there that you let the top kind of brown, you have all of that cheese, and then cutting it into slices, it's layered in there. It's gonna make a beautiful presentation, and it's gonna taste out of this world, I know. And I can't wait to try it with, with garden tomatoes, but it'd be good any time of the year. Don't forget this recipe, you can almost do it just the only thing you might need the, the quantities for would be the olive oil basil and making the pie crust. So you could use any pie crust if you wanted to use yes, a refrigerated I, pie crust and not make your own, you could. Yes, you could. And I usually use whole wheat flour, so. So it gets really healthy. Yes. Good for you. Thank you so much for bringing this to us. You're I welcome. really appreciate it. This is really wonderful. Glad to be here. Well, there you have it. News and events happening in and around the lake area. If you have a news story or see something exciting going on, please let us know. We can be reached here at the LMCC at 952-471-7125. Via email at lmcc at lmcc-tv.org. Or please check us out on our website at www.lmcc-tv.org. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next month on Channel 12's Lakeside News.